for some of y'all who's been watching my organ videos, and I know, yeah, it's kind of hard to do it now without, without me being at the city museum playing the organ. Well, the uh, organ itself at the city museum was built, built in 1924 for the Ridley Theater in New York City. See, theater organs, what's so neat about those things is they're built to accompany silent films because at the turn of the last century, every time you go to the theater, wouldn't be hearing all the extra sounds like you hear in uh, today's movies. So what the organist had to do, he had to be the one that to, to, to provide the sound uh, to to go along with the picture. And of course, he had to be having about two, several manuals because some of the sounds would be, would be on the different different manuals sometimes though, or you have to change the stops and stuff like that. And if anybody also been down to the Fox as well, the Fox Theater in St. Louis even has a theater organ that's got four manuals and the one at the uh, city museum has three of them. There's three manuals. You got the the uh, company at Great and, and uh, so on. Because yeah, the the uh, manuals on the on an organ they have names. From the theater organ you have the uh, the company and the great and the soul. The grade is, is the middle one on, on the free manual. And of course, then you got the pedals. On the four manual, you have the company, the great Lombard, and so on. And on the five manual, which is usually one of the biggest, you got the, uh, you, you have the, uh, the company, great orchestral, Lombard, and so on. And there is an organ just outside of Chicago that that does have uh, five does have five manuals on it. But some would think, who would want an organ that big? Did just to accompany a movie? I guess because if in case you want to have uh, have many sounds on it, because uh, usually that's how they throw in some of the sounds. Uh, they'd be push buttons along the side uh, on the side of the manual, or there's done, or there was a done with the uh, toe piston, you know, which was usually done with the right foot. And of course the left foot, uh, they, they provided the, ex, the extra base to go along with the, with the theme. And the silent films were made up until 1928. Because then when the talkies came in, the uh, theater organs continued having uh, continued their uh, career at the theaters, but they uh, later on became uh, providing the music. Or if there was a sing along before the before the film, that day would be used as a way to accompany the audience uh, having a little sing along. At least in New York, they did. And usually would just the organist would just say, had the organ just sitting right at the level of the, of the first row of the theater, and, you know, and then they would just and then we go for the going for the movie. The organist would just turn everything off though, and they would dim the lights in the theater so that people would be able to see the show. And sadly, what happened though is a lot of the old, old style movie palaces uh, were demolished to make room for, for many of these big corporations. Sadly, though, because and they all, a lot of them fell victim to the wrecking ball. And a lot of the theaters in New York, though, not only that when the wrecking ball tore the theaters down, but also the the organs that suffered the uh, the blow along with the the uh, with the with the wrecking. 
But the, the console at the Rivoli, somehow it was spared. And they took it out of the theater and they're trying to figure out what to do with it. Well, first, it was going to, they figured, well, let's bring it to St. Louis. And first, they're going to put it in the new Kirkwood Theater, which was the uh, theater at the uh, Kirkwood Community Center. They think about putting it in there. And somebody looked in there and they figured, well, there's no way they're going to put something like that into that theater because of all the space that would be needed for, for the pipes. And usually down there, there's no place on the floor to, to put the big console. They would either have to put it up on the stage and figure out how they, if they do, may have to run a little wire on it, or they'd have to run it back and forth to get it out of the way to, so it'd be, so it would not be seen during the, uh, during the play. So that was so that idea was scrapped. So uh, the uh, so the uh, so so what it, so people are trying to figure out where else we would be able to put it though. So they then they figure out well there's a there was an abandoned shoe factory downtown, though. So it was, which later on became the city museum. And later on, they figured out, okay, notice the city city museum has made some money off of this from the ticket prices and things like that. And it's just somebody said, hey, won't we put it there? And uh, and now. City Museum acquired the organ, and then of course, and somebody had to scrounge around for the pipes, so to be able to get the so to find a way to, to to get the sound from the three manuals and the pedals. So now the the, the pipes sit in the uh, in a in a room that used to be housed to Nitro Nitro scale model railroad layout. So now that. Uh, so the HL scale model railroad layout is moved somewhere else and now what's sitting in its place are the organ pipes. And then the console is of course sitting in the in the big eleven story atrium. And it's on a little platform, so then whoever gets it gets a chance to sit it there, gets a chance to gets to climb up there, so it's almost like going up, going onto a stage. And of course, and they get all the way up to where the fish tank is at. The, the stage is almost right up there, almost right above eye level. So that way, those those are for like when if there's to be a concert on that organ, that there be uh, somebody could set up a bunch of chairs and then using that area where the console is sitting on there, it's really looking like right up, looking right onto the stage. And of course, it'll be a little short little area over by where the, just right on the atrium side of the, uh, the little small little railroad track there, people could sit up there as well. And that theater organ was so neat though, well, if you want to make an old style movie, something that looks like it came out of the turn of the last century or something like that uh, theater organ said nowadays they could be they could be given a new, a new job of making an old style movie an old time movie and then and they're just to uh, just throw in the sound with the organ The thing is, the reason why I'm here at home, that they then, then at the reason you know, I'm not at the city museum because of COVID. But maybe once COVID takes it, once everything gets back to normal, I'm gonna be down there again playing the organ. Yep, 
I tell you one also thing about theory organ drop to what the job she you can they can do these days due to the wide variety of stops they come with that that comes with them all ever since they they were first introduced they can almost even play today's music so they you could uh, since you got the field drum you can you could do a rap song you can do a the people Bryson song because of all the uh, percussion stops it has and of course and you can even play one of the uh, something like a bar harp or on, on either the great or the, or the solo have a voxy mana and then for the pedals have like a, the uh, uh, tibia 16 foot and then you got to you got your own uh, barn B uh, band right right there all, all at the console of the organ As well as those that serve the play on the wings of love, and of course the most creative version ever, was a combination of both Virgil Fox and uh, Lewis and the career organist of the seventies, and uh, Daniel Roth, who plays the organ at Saint Sophie's in Paris. Here's one thing I would love to do when I do retire from work. And once you get this stupid pandemic out here, I would love to take a trip to Paris and be a guest organist at St. Sophie's Church and to play that big caviar coal organ. I would like to have, be able to sit at that big thing I mean, and see if I, maybe I can uh, rumble a few pedals on that thing. And that place has more like an eight foot, an eight second reverb there uh, over at Saints of Peace. Which meaning though I tell you once the organist takes his hands off the releases it his hands and the mangoes and his feet when he comes off the pedal so that the, the uh, sound echoes for about eight more seconds that's one of the places I love to go but I hear they did to get to that organ that place has a spiral staircase of about, of about pretty close to about 52 steps and really that the, where that console was the console is at that's about uh, that'd be about three or four US stories up into the uh, up in the air And you realize sitting up that high though, and you look out on uh, out into the nave, so you look at all those chairs, those, those uh, chairs look almost like something you can almost uh, pick uh, pick up with the bank finger, so because it's how hot how you are in that in that church. Well, I think of course I think there's a door that that leads behind the pipe facade, though I think that uh, might be able to take to you to the stairs, but I'm not sure. Once you come off the spiral staircase, I'd be able to get to the, uh, I'd be able to get, get over to the console after you come off of that, off of that big spiral staircase. Oh, I hope it does not come out to where you'd be looking over a balcony being up that high. 